If you walk into a room and someone um, says to you, Tamar, then you're like, oh my gosh, hi, right? But if you walk into a room and someone's like, you know, then you kind of like, so that's like what we're doing right now. We're walking into Adar and the energy that we put in, okay, it's not just a show for Facebook Live, the energy that we put in, that was a joke, kind of. <laughs> the energy we put in will return to us. And yeah, and you're not doing me a favor because the energy I get is from what I put in. So this is just about you. Okay, and also jumping is okay. Cartwheels, welcome. Um, dabbing, that was in honor of my mom. Okay, let's try this one more time. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> So I may as well just celebrate everything. Adeloya da. Chayev inish libesume. It is incumbent upon a person to make themselves happy, to get drunk in this state of not drunk on alcohol, but drunk on Purim energy, drunk on Adar energy. That I'm so drunk on my love of life that I'm like, screw it. I don't even know it's right or wrong. I just want to sing. Chayev inish libesume. Libesume. Facebook or is anyone like really uncomfortable with it? Okay, here we go. Oh my gosh, that's like a microphone. Okay, I just want to include because there's such beautiful humans here. I just want to share the love. Just want to share the love with the beautiful people of Facebook. So now, because I felt last week I watched the thing back and I was like, oh, how sad that they don't get to see what I get to see. Okay, I'm going to teach you guys a song. 
We're starting with a lot of music because, well, it just feels like the best thing to do. So you should have got um, a little paper. finger bobber. Yeah, paper is the word. And yes, there is a unicorn pinata behind me. And yes, it is filled with delicious chocolate varieties of candy. <laughs> And yes, there is a bat in a ball for the end, okay? Stay till the end, it's gonna be fun. Oh, I don't know, it's just what they sold at the 99 cents store. Good question. Okay, so everyone got a little piece of paper? Did anyone get a loose paper? If you have a piece of paper, can you check if around you this piece of paper? You have paper, so maybe share so every other person can pass it on. Hey, welcome. Okay, here we go. Here are the words. Repeat after me, please. Lord, prepare me. Lord, prepare me. To be a sanctuary. To be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. Pure and holy. Tried and true. Tried and true. And with thanksgiving. And with thanksgiving. I'll be a living. I'll be a living. Sanctuary. Sanctuary. For you. For you. It rhymes. It rhymes. That's true. You know, I have to say, I wanted to like start with songs, and then acknowledge it doesn't feel right. So hi, Hashem. Oh, hi, Hashem. Hi, Hashem. Hi, Mom. Um, we'll, we're, we have dedications and stuff to come, but like uh, it felt funny to like not start with the Shem because that's where it all starts. So, thanks, Hashem. This is the best Rosh Chodesh party I ever been to, and it didn't even start yet. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. okay, so it's really beautiful. Um, it's going to be the theme of this parsha, which you don't even know yet, but I'll tell you, it's parsha Truma. Let's do that. Parsha Truma. <laughs> Poor girl, she's like, why is she asking? Parsha what? Truma. There you go. <laughs> parsha what? Truma. Now tell me, did this technique not work for you last week? It did. It totally yeah, it worked for Allison. Okay. Um, so parsha Truma, um, we're going to find out. It's about building the Mishkan. I'll tell you more about that, and we'll connect everything in. But this is like... Last year, on this day, my friend Hannah called me and she sang this in a voice note to me and I was like, why did you sing that to me? And she's like, I just, it came to me and that's exactly what the Parsha is about. So the punchline is in your hands, those are the lyrics. Uh, it's really pretty, I'm gonna teach it to you and we'll sing it, please God, at the end again. <clears throat> okay, uh, does anyone know it who would sing it with me to teach? Yes? Who said yes? I'll take you. Can you come sing it with me, please? <laughs> I just prefer not to do it. Here, you can sit on. Oh, no, no. Please. Okay. Okay. Oops. Okay. You have such pretty eyes. Thank you. What's your name? That's for my dad. Um, Tall. Hey, Tall. I'm Neely. Hey. Hi. Cool. No, let's share. Let's share. Okay. So, which, you want to just start the note and I'll match whatever you sing? No. Lord, please. Okay. Okay. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Okay, so people know it. Let's try it again. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Now, can we do it like we sing it already? Okay, we're gonna try it this time like a prayer, okay? So, yeah, just again, all of these things that I'm recommending, I I'm praying it so I get the benefit. I think you should pray it because then you get the benefit. Okay, let's try it. And if everyone can raise their voices, it would be so lovely for me. Okay, ready? Here we go. <laughs> all right, let me get out of Jamaica. <laughs> One second. Okay. I love you. Just a far right. Okay. <laughs> Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a Let's do it one more time. Ready? Five, six, here we go. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary. Oh my God, that was so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have
have all the same friends? Uh, yeah. It turns out. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> Do you want to say hi to our peeps? Hey guys. Want to turn us in? All right. So that was really beautiful. Um, do you guys agree? Mm -hmm. okay. There's another seat here. If anyone wants it, you can take it to the back. There's two seats here, actually. Um, and if you're not using your hand warmers, please feel free to pass them to the side. And if you don't use the hand warmers at this year's, please don't take them home because I'd like to use them next week. Uh, they all disappeared last week. I was like, wow. I was like, wait. <laughs> okay, cool. It's, that was a beautiful song, wasn't it? Yeah. I love that sound. Okay, dedications. Um, first, of course, we want to thank our hosts, the beautiful Braun family. As of this morning, I hadn't really got my act together, so I called them this morning and I was like, hey, how do you guys feel about hosting? They're like, we'll do it. We have this. We're lighting all the fires. Bring it on. We're contributing. We're happy sponsor. I was like, oh my god. We're hanging lights. Like, welcome. They don't, they don't even, guys, please give your hosts a better round of applause. Yeah. Thank you, I appreciate that. We're very grateful and uh, yeah, I'm feeling happy. Okay, also, um, today was my mom's shloshim, so I just blessed my ima to have an aliyat neshama. And also, today, a very holy lady went up and she's the ima of the first family, so um, Sipora Bat Ariel Halevi got buried in Yerushalayim today. She should have the sweetest aliyah along with um, the mom and grandpa of our hosts, Rachel Bat Rafael, Yaakov Ben Eliyahu, my friend Sips Abba, and my friend Hannah's Abba as well. Um, also, Lehavdio, we want to wish Rafu Shleimah to Rav Shalom Arush um, Ben Yamna, and also to our friends Miriam Barilana and Shalom Ben Miriam. And please take a minute and think of who you want to dedicate this class to. Meaning, when you come to Torah class, you get light. And when you get light, you could keep it or you could share it. Mm. But it's best always to know in advance. Like, oh, I want, you see that person next time and you're like, oh, at the beginning of class, I dedicated it, my heart, to your good, to your soulmate, to your shalom bite. So, will everyone just take a moment and think of another person? Great. And that means you too, Facebook. Okay, so what are we get? Ha, little whoop. Thank you. I'll be asking for those periodically throughout the evening. <laughs> okay, so uh, here's what we're gonna do tonight. Because it is Rosh Chodesh Adar, and by the way, there's two day, two Rosh Chodeshes and two Adars this year. Okay, so two Rosh Chodeshes means that both Tuesday and Wednesday will be Rosh Chodesh Adar. And um, so that means Hallel and Musaf on both of those days. If you pray Shachar, you can add those in. Um, and, uh, okay, so we're gonna do some Adar Torahs. Then we're gonna do some Truma Torahs. That's the Parsha, what's the Parsha? Truma. Sweet, and that's about building the Mishkan. And the main question that I wanna ask is why are we so obsessed with the Mishkan? Now, if you don't even know what the Mishkan is, don't worry, I got you covered, we'll go there. Or if you're totally religious and you've been raised with Torah your whole life and you still don't know what the Mishkan is, then pound, because that's, that's most people, right? <laughs> right? For the people that grew up like kind of learning Jewish education, you're like, the what? <laughs> huh? Yeah, okay. Uh, so after that, we'll review everything. Um, and before anything, uh, I have a question. We're gonna start with a bomb Bigity Torah. I have another favorite. Can I please have a tissue? <laughs> Does anyone want to know? Okay, I said costumes because it's Rosh Chodesh Adar. But does anyone, um, does anyone want to know why, the, what's up with the unicorns? Why is everyone wearing unicorn hearts? Why? Okay, raise your hand if you have no idea why we're wearing unicorns. Thank you so much. Raise your hand if you think you know why it's unicorn themed tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah I could have called that out. Okay, <laughs> right, because you were in my class. <laughs> Okay, sweet. Okay, so the question is, I said, this is just, I have to just tell you, I have to like, spoiler alert, you're gonna trip your brains out, all right? This is one of the best things you're ever gonna learn in the Torah class. Hi, welcome. Okay, so, right, we have unicorn plates, we have unicorn napkins, we got, okay. So in the Mishkan, right, the Mishkan is, um, well, I'll tell you soon, it's, it's a tent, essentially. Here we go. It's a tent. Tent! <laughs> The Mishkan is a tent, okay? And every tent, especially like the really good ones, you have like really good covers. Like who's been to REI? Oh my best, God, best, best store ever. Is, right. Oh, competition. <laughs> I feel really seen, Rivka. 
Okay, so here's the thing, is for a tent you need a good covering, right? A tent has to withstand the elements, you don't just want like a so-so covering. So there were a number of fabrics that they used to cover the Mishkan, and we will discuss them later. But there was a top fabric, and this top fabric was quite elaborate because three million people were going to travel with this tent in the desert for 40 years, and the center of their encampment was going to be this tent Mishkan. So, you know, if you're wondering what three million people are gathering, wouldn't you be in You know when you see like a street fight, you see all the people gathering, you're like, ooh, what's going on? Yeah? Y'all? Apparently I'm Dutch or something. Right? So then imagine you see three million people gathered. Don't you want to know what it is? Yeah. So would you imagine that the presentation of this encampment in the middle of a 40 year journey with three million people surrounding it is going to be something important, right? Mm -hmm. Or something beautiful, right? Yeah. So let me tell you what the other coverings were. So one of the coverings was a layer of purple. One of the coverings was scarlet. One of the coverings was turquoise. One of the coverings was goat hair, which I'm really grateful for my sister's Chewbacca seatbelt holder. <laughs> goat hair. Oh, here, Joanna, if you're watching. Oh my gosh, I didn't show the people on Facebook. I'm sorry. How rude. They like literally sit at their homes. Purple, we had a purple covering. We had a turquoise covering. We had a scarlet covering and a goat's hair. Let's see if you guys can get that down. We had a purple. scarlet is red, yeah. Turquoise. Goat. Let's try that again. See, now you're going to know what the coverings were, but there was one more. And this, this one was called, biblically, the Tachash. Now, the Tachash was apparently an animal, according to Rashi and the Midrashim and the Gemara in Shabbos 28a. Write that down, because someone's going to be like, yeah, right, that's not true. And you're like, Gemara, Shabbos 28a, say that out loud. 28a. Good. Gemara is like the Talmud, so Gemara. Shabbat is Shabbos, that's the tractate. 28A, that's the page, okay? Say that, Gemara, Shabbos, 28A. And then you go, Booyah. Okay, so it says that this Tachash was an animal that once existed, no longer exists, will return in the times of Mashiach to make us shoes, which as a vegetarian I'm very uncomfortable with. But this was an animal that had multicolored skins and one horn. The unicorn was real. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, so the unicorn was real. The unicorn was a real thing. It's sourced in the Gemara. Ha! Good job. That's amazing. Limor, will you please come model what a beautiful um, unicorn might look like? Now, I did go to Goodwill and find a unicorn dress, and I'm really proud of myself. But we have here a real live unicorn to. Uh, please, will you show us your stripes? Because the unicorn was known as, according to Rashi, Sas <laughs> big vanim, which means happy in all of its stripes. In other words, and I give you a bracha, that the reason that we chose the unicorn was not actually because necessarily of its beautiful skin color, multicolored skin color, and it's this amazing unicorn horn, but because it was content in all of the ways of its life. Meaning it understood life had ups and downs, and it was sas big vanim, sas like the word sason. It was happy in all of its different shades. So just because you came up, Impromptu, I bless you. You should be happy in all your shades of life. Amen. 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 You want to say hi to the peeps? Bye, peeps. Okay, cool. So that was the final covering. Can we just give a round of applause for the unicorn? Woo! And yes, we do have unicorn tablecloths. And let me tell you, my friends, we have a lot of unicorn prizes tonight. So I really recommend, I really recommend participation if you like unicorn shtick. All right. So. Uh, Anyone want to volunteer? Just kidding. <laughs> okay. So guys, hello. Is that why is there no reaction? Like there was a unicorn in history. It, guys, the the Balters don't know. Guys, let me tell you something. Mishpacha Balter. In history, there was a unicorn, and we used it for the covering of the Mishkan. Mishkan. And is there a unicorn anymore? No. 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 It went extinct. But will it return? Yes. When? Mashiach. To make us shoes. I know, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work. I don't know. I don't know. I can't, I know. I can't explain it. All right. So my friends, I thought that that was going to like wow you to high heavens and hopefully it did. If anyone wants, you can take a blanket from a chair that's not being used, bring it down. There's actually a low seat right here for anyone that likes a meditation sort of seat. Doreen, welcome. Oh, this is so special. Um, you guys could pull up on the grass or you could stand for an hour and a half. You choose. Okay, great. So wait, what's the first thing we learned? That tonight is? 
Tonight's Adar, and how many days of Rosh Chodesh are there? Perfect. And which parsha are we in? Truma. Oh, there were some people who had no clue. We're in parsha. Perfect. And in Truma, we build the, which we'll find out about later. And there was four coverings, or really five. One was next, next, next. Oh, I'm wrong. It was four coverings because the goat hairs were red dyed goat hairs. Okay, red dyed goat hairs. And finally, unicorn. Unicorn. Now, just so you can just say this, the name is. Top. Hi, you're here. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. That's game change. You're not on Betzalel Street anymore. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So, what was the unicorn called? I'm sorry, what was the unicorn called? The Tachash. Let's say that again. Tachash. Yeah, and were unicorns real? Yes. Yeah, unicorns really existed according to Rashi. So, all right, we're going to start with a story. Yeah. So unicorns existed specifically, I'm not sure if they existed from Gan Eden until the Mishkan or if Hashem sort of brought them into the world at the time of the Mishkan. Just to give you context, the time of the Mishkan is after Har Sinai. Okay, at Har Sinai we build the Mishkan. Har Sinai is after the splitting of the sea. Good, the splitting of the sea is after Egypt, Egypt. good. Egypt is after Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, and thereafter Adam and Eve. So let's just do that backwards. You have a really good context of time. Adam and Eve, Noah, a few generations, Avraham, Yaakov has Yosef, and through Yosef they go down to Egypt. In Egypt they're in slavery. They have Exodus. They go through the, see, they end up in the, they arrive at, very good. And then we learn about a lot of, laws, whoever was here last week, and some of those are how to make the? Yeah. Very good. That was all of history in five seconds. Are you proud of yourselves? <laughs> Did that help anyone contextualize where we are who maybe hasn't been learning Torah so much recently? Should we try that again? Okay, mm -hmm. it starts with? Adam and Eve. The reason I'm doing this is not, I'm not trying to like condescend anyone. This is how I got the information into my head is I just had to keep putting everything into context. Okay, starts with? Adam and Eve. Then comes a guy named Noah. World gets wiped out. World gets reinstated. Then there's a dude named Avram Avinu. Next. Isaac. Next. Yaakov has his main 12 tribes. And the favorite one? Joseph ends up down in Egypt. If you don't know that story, come around next year. And from Egypt, everyone gets into slavery. How do you do slavery? <laughs> slavery. From slavery, they go through the? They end up in the? In the desert, right? Midbar, which is really awesome because Midabar, you could hear a chef speaking there. And from the Midbar, they arrive at Harsina. Very good. And from Harsina, they stay for how long? Close. They stayed at Harsina for a year, then they keep traveling in the desert for almost, almost 40 years. They've already been there for a year. Okay, and this is the point. So now the Jewish people are encamped around Harsina and they're learning about how to make the. Because we're in Parsha. Is that you? How? Oh my god, it's a prize! You get a prize! A unicorn? You get your very own unicorn glow wand! Wow, thank you. <laughs> oh, yeah, I gotta find the other Love prizes. Me. They're here somewhere. Oh, oh. Okay, okay. Oh, Rush photos nice. jump. That's my mom. My mom would do a prank like that. Alright, I'm gonna start with a story, even though we kind of started already. Has anyone ever heard the story about the bucket of poo? No. Oh, <laughs> the truth is, I don't even know whose story it is. I learned it in Cape Town, like some Chabad rabbi gave it over 15 years ago, and I was like, I love that story. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story about a bucket of poo, so that just in case you arrive at your Shabbos table and you forget everything else we learned, you're going to have an amazing story. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay, if anyone is Russian, do not take offense to my terrible accent. I do. <laughs> oh my God, come be in the story. Come on, come on. Get in. Gideon. Okay. Gideon. 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 What now? Is it okay to tell them how old you are? 18. This is 18 year old Gideon, and he comes to Torah classes every freaking week. <laughs> okay, come in the Facebook, please. Okay, so your name, give us two really Russian names that are Jewish. Jacob Alexander Vitrajman. <laughs> no, not your name. Oh, no, my name. Okay, you could be Jacob, but I'll be Alexander, okay? So we're brothers, okay? We're brothers. Here's my KS. Wait, you're a boy? 
Yeah, yeah. Know. Okay. It's a past life thing. Okay, cool. so... <laughs> seriously. <laughs> okay, so anyways, me and you are walking down the street and we are discussing Gamora because we are big rabbis. Ready, learn Gamora. Okay. Ready, come, yeah. Oh. So yes, I'll do it. Yeah. Okay, so the Gamora in Shabbos 28 day talks about unicorn. What do you think? Puzzle. And then, all of a sudden, a policeman comes. No, no, he's Jaco. Sorry, we need that's uh, that's Boris. No, policeman, I'm serious. Come on, let's go. And we're learning. We're stagging on the way. Now we're in Russia, like 400 years ago. Is this permitted for us to be learning? What are you doing out here? What are you? What are, um, uh, we are brothers. I am sorry. We are we are brothers. brothers. We're just talking to. Um, What's on God. your shoe? We are talking to God. I am sorry. I cannot lie. Talking to who? God. Where? Throw us in jail. Throw us in jail. Throw us in jail. <laughs> Scream at us. Scream jail. At us. Go to jail. Oh what if no. I'm Russian? No, we are you Jewish. You're Russian. No, no, no. We are Jewish. We oh. must go to jail. <laughs> no. Are you Jewish? Can we oh, must go to jail. Pit, the pit. No, no, no. Yeah, the I'm, pit. I'm Christian. Okay, okay, he's oh, out. Okay. Does anyone else want to volunteer? I think he's done. The pit. Okay, I'll be both brothers. I can go okay. in the pit. Uh, oh. like, you're the policeman. Well, I have to take you there. Okay, no, we're okay. there. Oh. Okay, we're here. All right. Okay, we're there. So he throws us, so he throws the brothers in jail, and then the brothers are sitting there, and they're feeling really... Good job. Oh, oh no, we'll have you back in a minute. Actually, stay. Stay, stay. Well, okay. I have to guard. Okay, guard. Yeah, we actually really do need you to guard. You know the story. Okay, so the brothers are now in jail. My chaver in the back. I love you so much, but you're distracting me like crazy. Okay, I kind of want to be in your party, so just don't give me FOMO. Keep it down. Okay, fine. So the brothers are in jail, but this is Russia, 400 years ago. And I'm actually Russian by heritage, so now this is totally PC because I'm one of them. Okay, fine. So, anyway, anyway, so we are sitting in jail, but it is very scary because it's not like jail now. It is jail then. Then, jail then it's a very scary place. It's like cave. And in this cave, okay, so it's like a cave and like all the prisoners, I don't know. My mouth started hurt. And then, but all the prisoners are in one cell. It literally cell, it was like a pit. And the exactly. And the guard is watching. And the guard is watching. <laughs> okay. And the thing is that is this is not like LA, you don't have like a flat screen in your jail cell, you have a bucket in the center of the cell and that bucket is to use the restroom. It's not like they had like, you know, lavatories. So anyways, the brothers are sitting there and he says, I am so worried, I am so scared because in the corner there's like Mo the murderer and there's like Tony the toll chopper and there's Vladimir the rapist, you know, this is a scary well, Vladimir, scene. He's nice. He's nice. Vladimir's not nice. Vladimir's specific bad. So anyways. I give him extra food. So anyways, so they're sitting there and they are feeling scared. He says, it's okay, my brother, Hashem will help us. Do not fear, do not worry. God is on our side. Don't fear, it's okay. My brother's like, no, but I'm really, really scared. And like, I don't, it's just like, it's okay. Don't worry, we have nothing to fear. Only fear Hashem, it's okay. So okay, he's like calming down and he's calming down. And then he's like, oh my gosh. And the brother's like, what? And he says, the bucket of poo. And don't the brother's take, like, don't no, don't take yet later. We'll talk. Okay. So the brother's like, I, I just realized we have halacha. In this halacha, it says that if you <laughs> smell the poo, you cannot pray in this place. There's a halacha that says if you are next to excrement, you cannot pray there. And, the, and, the, and he said, oh my God. Oh my God. And he says to his brother, I've never not davened. I've never not prayed to God, and tomorrow morning when I wake up, I will not be able to say shakari. He's like, I'm not scared of these guys anymore, but I, this is like, I don't know what I'm gonna do. And I wanna tell you very realistically, when I found out that as an onen, which is a person that is before the, the person you're close to is buried, but before, after they're dead, you're called an onen. And in this time period, you cannot pray, and you cannot say Torah. And when I found that out, I just started to cry, because I did not, even understand what it's going to be like to take a bottle of water and not make a bracha first. I was like, I was so sad. So I felt him and he was like, I won't be able to pray. And his brother's like, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. Um, don't worry. But the brother's freaking out too because he knows it's true and he's just trying to calm his brother. And he's like, no, it, um, uh, oh gosh, I don't know what to say. And they're sitting there and brother one starts to cry. And the other brother's like, Hashem, help us. Hashem, I got it. And he says, brother, brother, listen, if it is true that you cannot pray tomorrow because there's halacha, 
chalacha. Chalacha, right? The Russian people get that right. So chalacha, then, then the truth is you are truly serving God. Because if you are keeping halacha by not praying, you are still serving God. And the brother goes, oh, this is wonderful. And he says, oh, this is wonderful. And the brothers, as good Jews, get up and they start going, now listen, they're dancing around the bucket of poo, and as we know, happiness is contagious. So all of a sudden, Mo the murderer, Mo the murderer, Mo the murderer comes up and starts dancing too. And then all of a sudden, Tony the toe chopper starts dancing too. And then the guard says exactly Why that. Dancing? Why are you dancing? Why are you dancing? No, get in, get, get, no come in the screen, though. Come in the screen. Come in the screen. Come in the screen. Dance. Dance. Also, why you speak English? <laughs> Just say, why are you dancing? Why are you dancing? And oh, oh, ask him because I'm still dancing. <laughs> and you say, you sure have long hair for a man. <laughs> <laughs> what Tony oh, the toe think... chopper said is, I think the Jews is happy about the bucket of poo. But let's dance. So they're still dancing. And the guard says, the guard says, what? These Jews are happy about a bucket of poo? Say that. These, these Jews are happy about a bucket of poo? <laughs> these Jews are happy about a... And then you say, oh, I think so. Bucket of poo? Oh, I think they're happy about a bucket of poo. I'm taking it. I might be happy about it. No! <laughs> See, that's it! I'm taking oh, it! I take bucket of poop. <laughs> so he says, okay, I take it from them. And then the brothers looked at each other and they went, oh my gosh. Now we can dive in. We can dive in! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the story. <laughs> and the point is, the point is that I, I, wow, this is going to be a long share tonight. We didn't even get to the first story. Okay. Should I, should I stay? Okay, round of applause. Give him round. Okay. And uh, the point of this story is not just a cute story. It's actually a deep, profound lesson about our lives. Yeah, good job, Felice Minyako. The deep, profound lesson is that sometimes, sometimes there's no bucket of poo in our lives and we could just dance. But a lot of times, there really is a bucket of poo in our life. And it's that very thing that, that tells you that because I have this problem in my life, then I can't be happy. And it's not true because the problem is there intentionally to see if we can still pull ourselves do the avoda of hap. It is the hardest avoda, okay? Keeping alacha, not the hardest avoda. Shabbos, not the hardest avoda. Pulling yourself up into happiness, the hardest avoda. And that can be there whether or not there's a bucket of poo. So I really bless us somehow to figure that out. Amen. Amen. Okay. Excuse me. So, from my teacher, yes? I'm so sorry. What is avoda? I oh, thank you so much. Always ask. Avoda, avoda, I said it like an Ashkenazi, is avoda in Hebrew. Avoda in Hebrew is? Work. work. So, when it means work, it means like the greatest work that we can do is to try to pull ourselves up when we're down. It's an avoda. It's not like a cute thing or like, yeah, not that. Like, you know, those signs annoy the crap out of me. Sorry. Oh, it's a bucket of poo. It's perfect. <laughs> no, but really, you know, be happy. I'm like, shut up. <laughs> right? I'm like, what do you mean be happy? How about I'm going to work hard every single day before I be happy. <laughs> Screw you. No one else feels that way? Okay. Anyways, my teacher Leah says that Chodesh Tov, because we're in the new Chodesh, is from the word Chadash. So when we start a new month, it's Rosh Chadash, that we can take a new mindset. So you can bless yourself on Rosh Chodesh to always begin anew. Get it? Rosh Chodesh, Rosh Chadash. Everyone sees the correlation between those words? Chodesh is month, Chadash is new. So that's the idea of renewal. That's why the moon represents renewal. Wow. 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 Oh, I know. So I'll just tell you a few fun facts. Is anyone a Pisces in the house? Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Pisces. This is your birthday month, or actually months, because we have two Adars because it's a leap year this year. Um, 
Mazal, the Mazal of Pisces is actually, it's a month of good fortune. So if you've been struggling astrologically, good news, that's likely to change soon because this is a month of good fortune. And it's an interesting one because the Pisces is a fish and fish lives in water, okay? Water represents Torah. Water also conceals and reveals. Okay, you got that? Can you understand how that works? If you look in the ocean, you can see there, right? But if something is dirty, you take water, so it both what? Because we're in the month of, which is the sign of? Pisces. Sweet. So Megillat Esther, the highlight of the month of Adar, is the book of Esther read on Purim. Megillat Esther in and of itself. What does the word Megillah come from? Legalot. Legalot, which means? To reveal. And what does Esther come from? Hidden. Hester, which is hidden. So yeah. even Megillat Esther means revealing the hidden, concealing the revealed, and hiding it all, and doing it all back and forth. Um, by the way, there's a sign as you come in that say, party, and then under it it says, it's a, because <laughs> it's Adar, so everything's upside down. <laughs> Good for him. Okay. All right. Now, uh, anyone know how to say fish in Hebrew? Dag, which sounds a lot like the word da'ag, which is to worry. So another one of the fixings of this month is to work on worrying. Isn't that an interesting one? Yeah, dag, da'ag. It's a similar source. So this month, if you struggle with worry, then that's a great month for you to do that. Um, also, Rev. David Sachs, oh, yeah, let's all do this. Let's have fun. Everyone do this, please. We've done this before in the class, but it's so good. Yeah, pretend like you're swimming. Pretend like you're swimming because we're fish, right? It's Pisces. If you're like literally online at home, just do this with us, okay? Okay, so we're swimming, right? So David Sachs says, the reason we love talking about fish and sadiqim is because the truth is we, like the fish, are always swimming through godliness. Wherever you are, if you're in your bath, if you're walking down the street, if you're on Melrose, if you're at the beach, if you're on a hike in Topanga Canyon, you are actually swimming through godliness. Isn't that interesting? Have you swum? Did you swim? I did, I did. All right, did. so there we go. Uh, all right, just for fun, the tribe is Naftali. And Naftali is really cool because it means nefetli, sweet to me. So everything in this month is good vibes, good fortune, sweetness, revealing, concealing, whatever you're fixing is, but it's really, really good vibes. Um, now this is an interesting one, that there is an organ of the month. There's always a body part and an organ of the month. And this month is the spleen. Does anyone know what the spleen does? or what the spleen um, in like, uh, let's say, Ayurvedic or Chinese medicine correlates to, check this out. It's the fixing of the spleen, it's the fixing of melancholy and despair. Yeah, this, yeah. In, in, so isn't that fascinating that we just think, oh, there's this weird book called Sefer Yetzirah and it tells us about all the different fixings of every single month and it says this month is the spleen. No, you gotta keep learning and you look it up and you say, hey, what's the spleen? Whoa, that's where melancholy and despair sit. Wow, that's my uh, avoda. Yeah, that's what's up. It's, so just to give you info, because I just find this interesting myself to blend the, the, the Torah of my body with the Torah of the Torah. Um, the spleen is a filter for blood, and it's a part of the immune system. Now, don't be confused. You are right if you think that immune sounds a lot like imuna, because they are completely correlated. Your immune... I know, I know, I know, right? Yeah, your immunity has to do with your immunity, right? And the more you strengthen your immuna, the more you will have greater immunity. Now, that doesn't mean if you are sick currently, you don't have strong immuna. It just means you probably have an extremely high capacity for a lot of immuna, and therefore you can still get sick. So no one should think, oh, I'm sick, it means I have low immuna. It's not that, it's in parallel. It's, it's interesting, right? So interesting. Okay, now. There's also a letter of every month. Does anyone know the letter of the month of Adar? C. Who said C? That was pretty close. Uh, C is like, what, what sounds can the C make? K, good. It's a kuf. Very good. It's the letter kuf, right? Reish, she, no, kuf, reish, shin, taf, right? So it's there, right there at the end. And a kuf, if you just say it differently, is a? A monkey, a kuf. So why, why is the kuf the letter of this month? Because you're literally meant to monkey around. Yeah. And if anyone noticed the chopped off foot on the food table, who noticed the chopped off foot on the food table? If you want to know why there's a chopped off foot on the food table, it's because my mom was a prankster. And we all took on a commitment to try to prank people more after her passing, because you're supposed to take the good qualities. So this month, you're literally meant to monkey around to have some fun. Put a whoopee cushion under your um, colleague's you know, seat at work, you know? 
Yeah, this is, and, and the funny thing is that that's a holy avoda this month. We're supposed to monkey around, loosen up. You know, I'll tell you a difference between Israel and outside of Israel. Is Israel really gets Purim. Why? What's the difference between Israel and America? In America, or God forbid, God bless America, God bless America, right? But, <clears throat> and, sorry, not but. Purim here, it's the weirdest thing. Only the kids get dressed up. I'm not talking about that one party you went to at Chabad of Soda. <laughs> Here, it's so weird. The parents, the parents like put a headband or something, but that's maximum. In Israel, oh, well, that's good. I'm glad you're proving me wrong. In Israel, everybody dresses up, and the real avoda is not for the children. The children are already happy. Even the saddest child is happy. Chas v'shalom, you should never be a sad child. Hashem, help us. Amen. But Purim is for us to monkey around. And I also really recommend that one of the blessings of having two Adars is that you really, yes. It just, what you just said made me think of, it's so fun that we say the children of Israel, not the adults of Israel. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Yaakov in the audience just said that maybe that's why they call us the children of Israel and not the adults of Israel, because we are meant to be like children. And that ties into the Parsha too. Please God, we'll get there. Okay, guys, so this partial will end at 2 a.m. <laughs> okay, oh, perfect, because what is the ultimate fixing of Adar? There is a fixing of senses, right? So in every month, one month you fix sleep, one month you fix eating, one month you fix speaking, one month you, spi you fix hearing, one month you fix seeing. Does anyone know what the fixing of Adar is? Word. Drinking, that's so cute. No, that's in the, that's in the eating and drinking one. That's shot. We just did that. <laughs> We're trying. We're still, it's a lifetime way. Guys, this is the best one ever. Laughter. laughter. It's the fixing of laughter. Let's laugh. Ha 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 ha. one real laugh in right now was it worth all of my dignity for your good thank you okay oh, it wasn't all of my dignity but a large chunk <laughs> try making those faces online thank you all right cool um, but the, the reason that's really special is because a lot of us think like wow great I have to try to laugh a lot and that's true please God will laugh a lot in the next two months amen. but amen thank you amen. thank you yeah yeah see you won that and look what you did for everyone else the other thing that's really important about the fixing of laughter is that the truth is, according to most psychologists, um, well, okay, that's not true. According to the psychology that I researched on YouTube, <laughs> let's be honest here, um, that, <laughs> that you have to, I'm working on being honest, I am, that, um, that most of our laughter is actually laughing at and not laughing with. Yeah. So that's really one tikkun that we could do, especially at children or if you feel uncomfortable, Take note, am I laughing at or am I laughing with? And unfortunately, when I started to practice this, I was like, oh no, I'm laughing at people all the time. Uh, so thank God, I'm working on it. But I, it, that's another cool thing, isn't it? Woo, yes, so cool. That's what's up, Tamar. How cool, so cool. Okay, and a beautiful tour that's been passing around just before we move into the actual Parsha is this idea that, oh, thank you so much, more seating? So this idea that in, so now that Adar is two months, we actually have 60 days, okay? Can everyone hear me in the back, by the way? Yeah. Yes, so in Adar, every month is around, you know, however, around 30 days. Adar is, oh, that is so nice of you. So Thank you so much. You know, I had that thought and I didn't do it. I am really grateful. Here's another Thank one. Thank you so much. Oh, Thank that's you. so nice of you. Thank you so much. Can you bring maybe this to whoever else might need it? Sure. Thank you so much. Okay, rad. Okay, so the thing is that Adar is now 60 days. Tomorrow it's two months, so we have 60 days. Now there's this very interesting law in Judaism that when you're cooking, if you're cooking a pot of meat, right, and a drop of milk goes in, is it kosher or unkosher? No. Kosher. What's this 160th speak that you all Torah people speak about? What does that mean, 160th? How Jewish of you to make a measurement out of it. <laughs> 
What does that mean, 1 60th? So there's a philosophy, uh, like a halacha, I guess, not a philosophy, called batel b'shishim. Batel, like bitul, like nullified, b'shishim in the 60th. Meaning that if you literally, and this is not designed for us rich and famous people of Los Angeles, but rather if you're a peasant and you're in your hut and you're making cholent and by accident a drop of milk goes in and that's your parnasa and that's what you're going to feed your family, you do not have to do away with it as long as it's 1 60th, it's kosher. So the blessing that the rabbis give us is that one, this month... 1% one one drop of milk, it's okay. 1% would be the... Per- yeah. One percent. Right, but for us it's different because like most of us could afford a new cholin, but you know what I'm saying. Please God, we should all be able to afford a new oh, vegan no, cholin. No, 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 no. Just kidding. Um, so the idea here is that if Adar is 60 days, then even if you have a bad day, like let's say you come from here and you're all pumped up, I'm going to work on happiness this month, I'm so excited, and then tomorrow you're like a wretched human, it's okay because that day is nullified to the rest of Adar the same way a drop of milk is nullified to the 60 days. Bravo. Yeah, wow. bravo, right? Say what? No, 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 no. But God is compassionate, so you could mess up every day, and it will still be nullified. And that's actually really important, because what we talked about is getting rid of melancholy and despair. And that's the whole thing, is like, even if I mess up again tomorrow, and then again tomorrow, and then again tomorrow, you know, Adar, each one is 160. Thank you. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, so now, yes. I'm so sorry. No, please never be sorry. Your questions are welcome, and if I don't want it, I'll say so. If a month, if a month is 60 days, does it? Two months. Two months. Because Adar is, there's two months. Like, but how many months are in the Jewish calendar? 12. In, in one year? 12. But if same, one same. is 60, that means <laughs> one doesn't so exist. So it's a leap year. No, we have a double. We have a 13 year, 13 month year every yeah, few years. So this is a leap year. So That's this is why a leap year. Is not exactly. every Adar. This Adar Exactly. Is 60 every days. few, I think it's every four years? Three? Something seven out of every 19 years. God bless you. There you go. Seven out of every 19 years. Okay, so what's really sweet is um, that the month of Adar actually blends beautifully into the Parsha because does anyone know what Adar actually means? Or one of the meanings because there's a few. So actually, if you break down the word, how do you spell Adar in Hebrew? (coughs) Aleph, Dalet, Resh. So if you break that into two words, what might you get? So you, Aleph, Dar, okay? Aleph, Dar. Aleph means one, like Hashem. Dar means to live, like a dira, an apartment. Aleph, Dar is the idea that God dwells in this month. Aleph, Dar. Now that's amazing because the whole point of, you know, Chabadniks say that the whole reason God created the world, I love that you're taking notes. I want everybody to take notes. That's the best thing ever because then you remember the Torah. I don't know. It's so weird. I never went to a shir and didn't take notes. Gotta get your notes. Gotta get the notes. Yeah. Uh, uh, by the way, if anyone is not using your hand warmers, I see a few people with crossed arms, so please volunteer them. If you're not using your hand warmers, volunteer them in case someone else wants them. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so Aleph Dar means God dwells. And the whole Chabad says, does anyone know what Chabad says about the purpose why God created the world? Because God wanted a... Adira betachtoinim. Adira betachtonim. Which sounds like an apartment in your underwear, but that's not what it means. It means adira betachtonim, a dwelling place in the lower realms. The earth is the lowest realm of all the spiritual worlds, and God wanted to go all the way down to the depths and be with us. So the whole point of building a Mishkan was to make a place for God to dwell with us, and Adar is about Hashem coming down to dwell with us, so it blends nicely. So now, here's, what part shall we in? Truma. Great, let's try that one more time. Truma. Sweet, we're in Parsha Truma. And in Parsha Truma, we're building the now here's the thing that I want to tell you, okay? If you look at the Parsha, which Allison did, where you at? There you at. If you look at the Parsha, because last week I was like, everybody learn the Parsha before you come. So if you look at the Parsha, you'll see that really, really, it's so weird. This Parsha is like an Ikea instruction manual. You have the coverings, and then you have the fabrics, and then you have the beams and the hooks and the connective things, and this box, and that box, and this utensil, and it's like, wait, what? What is this, Ikea? And actually, no, it's not just this Parsha we're gonna learn about this Mishkan, it's literally the five, nearly all of the five remaining of Shmut, 
all of the book of Vayikra and the first few portions of Bamidbar, we learn about the Mishkan. It is the number one topic in the entire Bible. And we still don't even know what it is. Did you guys, yeah, did you guys know that most of the Bible actually talks about the Mishkan? No. This is weird. This is weird. Mysteries. All right. So not only that, but the Mishkan, it stood for hundreds and hundreds of years. What are some of the famous places that it rested at? Jerusalem, Shiloh, right? Shiloh is the famous one. And then the Mishkan became the temple. And the temple stood for 400 years at a time. So this is something that's not only a large part of our Bible, it's a large part of our history. And we remain mostly baffled, especially when we read this middle chunk of the Torah. We're like, God, what are you talking about? What are all these sacrifices? What's this tent? What's this Ikea manual? So please, let's just admit, is anyone else totally confused about what the Mishkan is? Oh, come on, be real. Okay, good, more hands flew. And I saw religious hands too, which is really important because it means we were missing something. And not only that, we actually pray about this every single day. Did you, did you know that? Okay, here we go. So what, tell me, here we go. I have a big question, but I don't actually want anyone to raise their hand and answer, and I'll tell you why. I want you to think in your head, please. All y'all people in the back causing a commotion, making my ADD go flying. What is the difference between, listen closely, the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, the Ohel Moed, the Mishkan, and the Mikdash. What is the difference? You've heard some of these words before. The tabernacle, the tent of meeting, the Ohel Moed, the Mishkan, and the Mikdash. What is the difference between all of these things? It's like a one word answer? Just think in your head. You, the answer could be, I have no freaking clue. <laughs> the answer could be like, wait. Size. Ooh, that's They're a good all. Size is a good answer. Size matters. Oh. The motion of the ocean? Nah. <laughs> what? Ah, it was a trick question. That's why I didn't want anyone to answer on that because I didn't want to embarrass anyone. But I'll tell you, the Mishkan is also known as the tabernacle. Weirdest word in the English history besides phylacteries and Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Has anyone heard of the tabernacle? If you've ever been to church and they're talking about the tabernacle, this is what they're talking about. You didn't go to church here about the tabernacle? <laughs> It was also called the Tent of Meeting. Has anyone ever heard about the Tent of Meeting? It's also called the Mishkan. It's also called the Ohel Moed. And in this week's parsha, it's called the Mikdash. These are all the same things. And these are all referring to what I told you about before, that tent with all the different... Which colors? So this is this tent, this tent that we were talking about in the, in the beginning, right? This is the Mishkan. The Mishkan was the centerpiece of the encampment in the desert, right? In, front of, in, in the middle of how many people? About? Three for about how many years? And then we went into Israel with it, and it sat in Shiloh and a few other locations, and then it became the? Mikdash. The Beit HaMikdash. Guys, you know the temples that we used to have? Have you heard of the fact that we had to, you know, I got through eighth grade at a Jewish school. I had never heard of the temples. I only went to a temple, but I never knew there was a temple. <laughs> I, I, I didn't. But do you, where, where was the temple in history? Just because context? Jerusalem. Jerusalem, where? The Temple Mount, where's that? Okay, this is really good for context because if everyone is not shouting out the answers, we have to brush up. The Kotel is the remaining wall of the... Beit temple and the, the Beit Hamikdash and the temple came out of this tent called the Mishkan. Mishkan. Does that make sense? Does that help? Yes. Are we getting Jewish history down today? Yes. Sweet. Okay. So if you hear tabernacle, tent of meeting, oil moed, Mishkan, or Mishkan, it's talking about what we're talking about tonight. Um, l'chaim, guys. L'chaim. Okay. It was a portable tent filled with sacred objects used in Jewish ritual. So now I'm going to tell you about some of the things that were in this encampment. Oh my gosh, did you bring us the tape measure? It's on the way. All right, cool. So we're actually going to measure the size of this space, and we're going to see comparatively how it compares to the actual Mishkan. The actual Mishkan's measurements, get ready to repeat. Is anyone cold? Need a blanket? I just have to ask once. We're perfect. Okay, if anyone needs something, please do let somebody know, because I don't want you sitting here cold. What was I saying? 
The measurement of the Thank you. Kim! Love you. Okay. So the measurements were 75. I've translated these into feet so that us Americans can understand, right? But it doesn't really say in the Bible feet. <laughs> okay. It's 75 feet by 150 feet. How, how big was it? 75. Awesome. So that actually probably would look something like this, wouldn't you say? How? Like, or maybe that 75 feet? What do you guys think? This is how many? That's 75. What's your guess? This, this is 75? So this is probably the very, if this is 70, oh, the whole way? No, this is 60. This is 60. From here to the end, at the end is 60 feet. From here to the, I trust you. Do yeah. you work in, do you work in? Yeah, he's in no, just, <laughs> So from here, so maybe I'll just try to show the Facebook people. From this wall, okay, all the way, I'll show you the back, end of the backyard, all the way there, that's 60 feet, okay? So let's just say we're getting the tape measure. And the long way was how many? 150. 150. Guys, let's get your measurements down so you could tell people at your Shabbos table. The Mishkan was how many feet by how many feet? 150. Awesome. Okay, ready? Let's do this. Let's see how big it is. How many feet? Oh, you're serious or kidding? Oh, 75 by 150. Okay, so take the thing, please. All right, here we go. No, guys, I tell you, if you have thought in your life, wow, Torah is so boring, that's because you didn't go to your drawer and get out your tape measure. The second you start going to YouTube and get your tape measure, you'll also get a left Torah. Okay, so that's how... Wow, how, nice. how much is that? That's uh, 18 feet, 18 and a half feet. Only 18 and a half feet. So wow. double this would be about 36 feet. Wow. Okay, so my friends, come later and check out the size here. That's only 36 feet you may retract. Oh, it's perfect for the cowboy hat. That was like a, what do you call those things? <laughs> Missy, if you're watching, shout out. Okay, oh, amazing. So so this is about 36 feet. So if you really, now guys, this is mind blowing. Think about this. You are now understanding the real size of the Mishkan. The real size of the Mishkan is, this is 36, so that would have been double this. And then 75 is half of 150. I would assume this is like 75 then. So you could assume two of these that way is the Mishkan and two of these this way is the Mishkan. Does that change your perspective of what it was like to be in there? Wow. Have you ever thought about standing inside of the Mishkan, Eric? Is it Eric, right? Sylvie, what's your friend's name? <laughs> Never mind, just kidding. <laughs> yeah. But you said it's, it's, it's feet because of just oh, I changed the measurements. Yeah, I changed it, the biblical no, measurements. But, but it could be yards. It could be meters. I mean, what I'm saying is that does in Torah mention yeah, no, 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 no. exactly yes, what the know, measurement the exact, is? The measurements are hugely important. In fact, I believe it was Einstein who, was it Einstein who said that, that he has never seen a more perfect physical structure than the, than the Beit HaMikdash itself because all of the measurements like within sacred geometry and so on and so forth, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but there's something, it's like, like a human cannot come up with measurements of this, whatever. So it's really profound. Yeah, totally. So, also, it's your tefillin. Yes. Yes, they would carry the mishkan everywhere they went. They'd have to unpack it and pack it. So here's what's amazing. Stay tuned because what we're going to do in one of the next parshas is we're going to collectively build a mishkan, <coughs> please God, and then take it apart and try to, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah, I do it. I've done it with my SEM students every year. We have to do be makeshift, but like it's it's, it's an like amazing build exercise. Build a yes. Okay, so I'm just going to tell you um I would love focus. Thank you so much. It helps me. And if you have to go, that's cool. But if you're here, please be with me. Thank you. Okay. I'm going to tell you some of the things that are in the Mishkan itself. Because now you know that it's a tent and it had... Covers. Covers. That's what you know. I'm just going to tell you some of the other things. Okay. So one of the main features, and this is the OG spot where we learn about the menorah, there was a large golden menorah in the Mishkan. Raise your head if you've been in Jerusalem and in the old city and you've seen the golden menorah that they have ready for the third temple. Awesome. So this is similar except for this is inaccurate because this is a Hanukkah and the menorah had seven, um, seven, uh, what do you call these things? Branches. Yes. All right. So there was a menorah in the Mishkan and that, oh, I won't place it right now. I'll just tell you about things. There was, oh, 
this is amazing. I feel so cool. There were altars. There was two different altars. On one of them, they would bring their animal sacrifices. So I brought a veggie patty, so it looks like meat. <gasps> Barbecue sauce. So this is our official um, mizbeach. A mizbeach means an altar. And we did animal sacrifice back in the day. Questionable if it'll happen in the future or not. Did someone have a question? Wait, okay. Is the barbecue sauce? Oh, this is your. This is the misbea. It's like have a. It's like the Cohen's barbecue. Got it. Okay. Um, so so far, what what do you know about the Mishkan? The Mishkan had. The Mishkan had covers. Covers. The Mishkan had barbecue. Animal sacrifices. The Mishkan had menorah. Menorah. And when we learn about it, we'll put them all in the right place. So they all had places. But the Mishkan also had um, what was called. Uh, show bread. Okay, so here's pitas. If anyone wants, you can take them home. There were actually 12 breads and a lot of Sephardi families. Raise your hand if you're Sephardi. If you've ever been to a Sephardi family, you see them put 12 breads on the table. So this is the custom of the Arizal, I believe. I think. Double check me. Anyone know right now? 12 tribes. Yes, it does represent the 12 tribes. That is correct. Thank you. And so there were 12 stacked up show breads. So, so far we know the Mishkan was a in the middle of the in the middle of the encampment and it had beautiful covers and one of them was the unicorn so we're sitting Gemara Shabbos 28 good and it also had showbread and it which was called the shulchan what does shulchan mean exactly get it table bread makes sense cool and it also had the and it also had the barbecue sauce I want my hold on right I want my Mishkan back, Mishkan back, Mishkan back. I want my <laughs> Hashem's Mishkan. Right, okay. I'm even yummy. Okay, now, there, um, there was also, there was another altar. Does anyone know what the other altar was? Does anyone know what the other altar was? Incense! Palo Santo. If anyone wants to pass this around, it is a really amazing, where is Palo Santo around Peru? Yeah, but it, oh, Ecuador here. Anyways, Palo, Palo Santo is this really awesome incense, and it's very purifying. So if you want to pass it around and just to smell and see what smelling incense was like. Now, every, you have to light it to smell it. Every single one of these things that I'm telling you about, you could literally give a six-hour class on, maybe because there's so much Mishkan, we'll get around to it. But in the meantime, I just want you to know. So it had covers, and each, inside the Mishkan, there was a menorah, and there was showbread and there was a barbecue and there was an incense altar so there was a and there was and there was barbecue sauce anyone actually like a <laughs> italian sausage from morning star farms with barbecue sauce anyone hungry for, anyone hungry for some okay Morning stars the bomb. And there was a so we said there was a menorah and there was showbread and there was a meat altar and there was a dairy altar. That's really funny whoever said that. And there was an incense altar. Okay, and then here's the thing. What's up with all these? Oh, also, ooh, I forgot it. Neti Latia Daim. There was something called a kior, which was a massive copper hand washing station so that the priests could do their avoda. Get around to it in a second. And finally, what was at the center of the Mishkan? What was at the center? Why did we have this weird tent with all these altars? Sounds a little pagan. The Lucho, the Torah, the Aaron. Holy of Holies, the Aaron. You're all correct. In the center of this massive encampment that we know was twice this long and twice this long, in the center of that was a smaller tent. And in that tent was kept the Aaron. Now the Aaron, it was gold. It's, I'll tell you more about it later. It was a box. It had golden angel wings on e or angels on either side, okay? So at the center was the Aaron. Uh, so in the center was the Aron, and the Aron had golden, Swing. not butterflies, golden angels on top. That's right, okay? Now, why did they say that the Torah is in there or that the Ten Commandments are in there? Because they were. they were, because at the inside of the Holy of Holies, at the inside, in this box, underneath these golden angel wings were the Ten Commandments and a bunch of other really cool things we'll tell you about later as we study the Mishkan. So that was at the very center of our three million people was the Torah. And that the message for that is that the Torah is always meant to be the center of our lives. It wasn't just imagery, right? So here is the Torah. Here is the angels guarding the Torah and the place through which Hashem spoke to the Jewish people. That is in a smaller tent called the Holy of Holies. And the Holy of Holies is in a larger tent called the? 
Good job, guys. Way to go. Can you give yourselves a round of applause? All right. Now, why this word Mishkan, it's weird, and I'm just going to break it down for you. Because a lot of my point um, in wanting to teach is A, that we can make Torah fun, and B, that we learn things that is so annoying that you never learned before, and then everyone's talking about all this Jewish stuff, and you're like, wait, but I missed out on A, B, and C. Right? So I'm trying to fill this in on A, B, and C, which I, has been very helpful for me. Okay, so the word Mishkan breaks down into two words, much like the other word, Adar, which means Aleph, Dar, Hashem, Dvalz. Okay, great, we got that. L'chaim. Okay, Mishkan breaks down to two words, Mem, and what's left? Shachan, do you recognize that word from anywhere? Does it, is it the root of another word, perhaps? Shechina. So Mishkan, says my teacher Leah, breaks down into Mem, Shachan, which represents Makom Shechina, the place of the feminine divine. In other words... <laughs> I just have to say feminine divine. I've been working so hard, and that's what I needed to say. Oh, man, through the righteous women, I tell you. <laughs> okay. So the center, now just, I'm going to keep contextualizing, keep contextualizing, so we really understand what we're talking about. We've left Egypt. We've gone to Har Sinai. We got the Torah, and now Hashem says, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. Thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. So God says, make me a sanctuary. And the interesting thing, and everybody talks about this because this is the most profound line of the whole parsha. it says, make me a sanctuary and I will dwell in them. Now please tell me you caught the grammatic problem with that. Make me a sanctuary and I will dwell in them. But it's not a problem. It's the truth. God says, build me a mishkan. Make your life filled with Torah, and I'll dwell in you. Get it? God doesn't say, make me a beautiful synagogue made of crystal chandeliers and lots of gold, <laughs> and that will be my home. Hashem's like, no, I don't care. Build me any simple fortress. Just bring me into your life. Make me the center of your life. Make sure there's a shul in your community, and I'll dwell in your heart. You get it? Wow. That... Amen. Say what? Yeah, he's, yeah he, thinks, he makes things pretty easy, yeah. I mean, we had a kale salad tonight at a Torah year under heat lamps, like, convenient God. Right, so, the, oh, you missed the kale salad? You came too late. <laughs> too bad for you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the way you broke it down, Neely, actually made me think about something. So May I, uh, may I turn the camera on you or no? Uh, sure. sure. Okay. Sure, sure. So you broke Ooh. it down with the Mishka. Yeah. Opa. Yeah. Yeah. So we have the desert, yeah. you have the Mishkan, you have the Holy of Holies, yeah. and you have the Aron. Yeah. So that parallels the four worlds also. Oh boy, if I only began to tell you, may I please, you, uh, yeah. Uh, We're going to yeah, get so it. Okay, yeah, yeah. We have the four, four worlds from the reality, and the way you really broke it down, that you have like, the desert, and you have the Mishkan, Sweet. and you have the Holy of Holies, and you have the Aron, also has a parallel, great parallel to the four worlds. So, so you're right, and it's gonna, and we're, and that's like, you're, you're right. In a, okay, I, first of all, I haven't heard that exact interpretation, but I could say you're, 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 the way you're thinking is exactly where we're about to dive into. Okay, so here's the question: We said it's temporary. So where the heck did it come from? Why all of a sudden we need a mishkan? And where the heck did it go? So as we said, where it came from? Where did we first learn about building the mishkan? We said we were at. You guys are good. We're at. And we learned about making this mishkan. And actually, the sages say, again, this is like a seven-hour class. Do you need a blanket? That's a scarf. It's brand new. There's a tag on it. I have a blanket. Okay, fine. Yeah, there's so many. Okay, so the mishkan is actually what it was supposed to be is we had this mind-blowing experience of Harsinai. Who was at our Harsinai class at the Yosian family at 613? We had a mind-blowing... Yeah, who was at Harsinai? All of us. The Har Sinai experience, we learned about how crazy it was, and it was such a big gesture from Hashem to us that we wanted to keep this memory with us. And so what happened is God designed a miniature version of Har Sinai, which was actually the Mishkan. I'm not going to talk about it, but just so you know, the idea of the Mishkan, this tent, this Makom Shechina, this place where the feminine divine could come into our lives, was built as a replica of Har Sinai. And where did it go, Cotton Eye Joe? We said it became the... Beit became the temple. Good. Great. Now everybody knows where the Beit HaMikdash started with the... Mishkan. Mishkan, yeah. What do you mean by feminine divine? 
What do I mean by feminine divine? Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, I think we have to talk about it after. Okay. It's such, it's, it's such, okay, I'll elaborate a little bit. Um, my first answer is no freaking clue. <laughs> my first answer is I don't know. Like, it would be so chutzpahic to be like, well, the divine feminine is, like, <gasps> the divine feminine. So Hashem is everything, right? And if you talk about the seven hermetic laws, for example, like from the Kabbalion, you can see that there are certain ways that Hashem runs the world. And one of those is the law, I believe, of uh, mentalism, which has to do with masculine and feminine and the law of gender. It's not a law, it's part of a law. But the law of gender is part of polarity, which means that everything that's true is on a spectrum of both sides. So if Hashem is the all-encompassing truth, then he has to include all sides of all spectrums, including the masculine and the feminine. So if that's true, he has to embody both. And as embodying both, we have the masculine aspects of Hashem, which is often just represented by the name Adonai, or like what I'm saying is ridiculous because it's like a toenail of a toenail of a toenail. But then the other aspect is the divine feminine. And the divine feminine is called the Shekhinah. And the Shekhinah, as if, was married to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. But when we were exiled from the temple, the divine feminine was as if also exiled from her home, like a divorced couple that didn't actually want to be divorced. Um, so she's been in exile since the temples were broken down and we still are trying to invite her back into our lives. And one of the ways that Hashem came to continue to channel to us after he was revealed at Har Sinai in both of the genderizations, because he was revealed in full, um, then he allowed his divine feminine presence to come back in through the wings of the angels. As we said, the wings of the angels were on top of the Aron. So through the wings of the angels, the divine Shechina flowed through, and this is how we heard God speak to us. And this is still how we hear God speak to us. So if you're listening to Hashem speak to you, likely it is the sound of the divine feminine, which is the Shechina. And therefore, Mishkan is Makom Shechina. Did that help? Wow. That was great. Wow. Thank you. Oh. Fire. That was horrifying. Oh, cool. Thanks. I was really intimidated by that question. I was like, don't make me do it. Thank you, Hashem. Cool. We can try, yeah. Well, guys, we are getting to the best part of the year. We didn't even, we learned about unicorns, we learned about the tent, we didn't even get to the best part of the year yet, okay? So buckle up, my friends. And if you're unfocused, please focus for my sake. And if you want to be on your phone, if you want to schmooze, if you're not taking notes, just, just step outside because I really am sensitive and it takes so much for me to come up here. And I'm not saying that for guilt, I'm just saying like, I actually need your help. Like, don't think that because I act confident on the outside, I don't need your help. I do need your help, I really do. And I will try to stop asking for it. Yeah, what's the other question? Uh, I'll journal about it. <laughs> Do you want to, uh, my I instinct is to ask you. Yes, exactly. That's it. The, the story of the Shekhinah being kicked out is also the story of Eve falling and why the female is still down and just now coming up. It's the feminine rising. It's the moon returning to the size of the sun. It's all, yeah. Yeah, it's all connected, exactly. It's the age of Aquarius, it's all those things, 100%. You got it. It wasn't, it's not like, oh, it's like it's real that the feminine has been less than for all of history. That's, that mirrors God's divine feminine having fallen as well. Correct. Yes, wow, yeah, yeah, Bo Hashem. Say what? Okay, great. So guys, where's the Mishkan now? In we don't heart. have one, that's correct. We don't have one. And where are the, where are the items that I talked about? Where are all these precious Aron and the menorah and... <laughs> Nahan. Right, so either probably under Vatican City, that's, that's like the big conspiracy that most people really believe is true, and I do believe it's true. There's another idea that King Solomon had a prophecy that the temple would be destroyed, and so he built secret chambers underneath Harabai, you know where the Kotel is, where that golden dome is? There's secret chambers underneath there that I guess archaeologists and Muslims have not yet found, uh, or Jews, and that some of our items perhaps are down there. You know, there's a debate if the, anyone also, anyone went to Italy? Yeah. I went to Italy just so I could um, say to Hillem walking around the Colosseum to try to purify the air, and just so I could see that arch where they're carrying out the menorah. You guys know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Okay, and some people say that that's actually a false depiction, that they didn't actually carry out the menorah, and that it was really hidden underneath the chambers of King Solomon. But anyways, we really don't know. And this is where the movie Raiders of the Lost Ark comes from. 
Get it? Wow. I know. So for some people, that's the biggest mind blow. Raiders of the Lost Ark is Indiana Jones trying to find the Ark of the Covenant, aka the Aron, aka the center of the Kodesh Kodeshim, the Holy of Holies. So there's a fun fact. Wow. I know. And actually, the the guy, Wendell Jones, is like a real archaeologist. Cool. Yeah, he was really, wow. really, yeah, he was really involved in the Ark and. Before he died, actually, he had like a ton of information. There's a whole, anyway. Okay, so the truth is the Mishkan does exist like so much. We're about to power through. If you want to take notes, this part, put your phone on airplane mode so you don't get distracted by Instagram or whatever, go on Instagram. And then you will just, I'm going to like, I, today I was learning this. My sister asked me, she's like, Neely, is, how's the shear ready for tonight? And I was like, oh my gosh, the content, I'm flipping my brains out. It was so cool because the truth is, even though the Mishkan does not exist today, and please God, we'll have the temple again tonight, but the Mishkan is way more a part of every single person here's life than you could ever imagine. I'll tell you why. Raise your hand if you've been in a synagogue. Raise your hand if you pray. Raise your hand if you have a Shabbos table or if you've been to a Shabbos table. Raise your hand if you have a body. What? <laughs> he doesn't have a body. And raise your hand if you live in the universe. Okay, now raise your hand if you raise your hand for one of these things. And if you didn't, you're asleep. <laughs> Justin, what is going on? <laughs> oh, it's, oh, I got it. It's that Snoop Dogg. You know, I got Snoop Dogg's gin up there. It's oh, you. Indigo go. <laughs> it's true. Guys, if anyone's wondering, I actually bought Snoop Dogg's liquor for the... <laughs> Okay, so what we're going to learn about right now, and Vanna White, will you please do me a favor? You're Vanna. You're Vanna Reddy. Okay. okay, we need two. Now we need two volunteers. Actually, you know what? This will be fine. Okay. We're going to keep track for you what we're learning so that you can have a context. We're going to go through why today. Wait, will you be our Vanna White? Are you comfortable uh, with it? I'm not white. No, but are you, are you comfortable with being in front of the screen? Okay, so you're just gonna, you're actually, frankly, just gonna write, um, here, choose whatever works best. As I write, as I say these, you're gonna write, like, synagogues, as they happen. Okay, so you can start with synagogue. Right. Yeah, because we're asking now, so where is the Mishkan now? And I've told you that even though it is physically gone, it lives on very much in our lives. And in the beginning of this year, I said the word Mishkan, and 90% of us looked at me like, what? in the world is she talking about? I heard that in school. By the end of the night, you're gonna see that you've been living with the Mishkan in your heart, in your body, in your buildings, and in the universe since the day you've been born. Ready for it? I need your energy. We need like a, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so, start with synagogue. Okay, synagogues, check this out. Were you raised in a synagogue with a bima? Yeah. So synagogues are designed to look like the Mishkan. The bima was the outer altar where we had sacrifices. This was, this was come up with by like sages. It's not just every shul has a bima because like everyone wants to be like Jews on Broadway. We have a bima because that was supposed to represent the altars. Who knows, to get to the altar, what did you have to do? Go up. Close. You had to go up. You had to go up either by a ramp or there was, were there stairs or were there only, ramp? only ramps? Ramps. You had to go up. So what do you do in shul if you want to get closer to God? Do you want to pray? You go up to the? Bima. You go up to the bima. Did anyone else ever just think like, why do all shuls have these little places where you have to go up? Is it like an ego issue of the cantor? <laughs> I must stand higher than you. <laughs> no, man, it's the freaking altar because you used to go up the altars in the Mishkan. We said there were two altars, that's the Mizbeach. What two altars were there? Incense. Barbecue sauce and? Incense. Right, animal sacrifice and incense, very good. So we have the Bima, okay? You're a b you're a bima. Okay, second, we have a leader, a rav, a chazan. Who, who was, I didn't even tell you, but who worked in the Mishkan? The Kohanim, that's right. And the Levim as well, that's true. The Kohanim worked there, and so we had someone to lead us. That's the Kohen, that's your rabbi. Oh my gosh, boom. Now tell me something funny. How long have you been in shul and realized that there's a Torah in an ark? <laughs> Why did they call that thing the ark? It's the... <laughs> Get it? In your shul, there's an ark. That ark is supposed to represent the golden box with the angel's wings on it. That's why it's called an ark. 
I know, thank you. You're the only one giving me the reaction now. <laughs> Do you guys get what I'm saying? Isn't that funny? We've had this our whole life. It's like, oh, go put the Torah back in the ark or the Aron. You call it the Aron. Why is it called the Aron? means a closet, an ark. Because why? Because we had an Aron. Oh my gosh. Now, what is there always, always, always in front of the ark? I'll, we'll say them both. A near tamid. What's the near tamid? It's the freaking menorah. Your whole temple experience, your whole life, you've been walking into the Mishkan without even knowing it. And then who else said something in front of the Torah? There's a a curtain. Where was there? What do we say that there was? Cover. There were coverings, and most of the coverings are blue or red, right? How many of you had a red covering? At least we did, right? There was a curtain. Why is there a curtain in front of the Torah? Where do we learn that from? The? Oh my gosh. Now I have to say, we need some prizes. Okay, can I have help? No, this is not working for me. You did great, but it's not working for me. Thank you so much. Now I have to say, I forgot to give out my prizes, and I promise prizes. I'm just gonna walk around. You deserve the prize. Yay. Thank you very much. Let's see, Yay. you came up, you get a prize? Did not get a prize, you need a prize. You get a prize. It's a little bracelet. You definitely get a prize, and you could share this with Thank your daughter. You. And, oh, Tamar, oh, Tamar. No, you haven't answered any? No, you tried, you didn't even answer. And there's more prizes, I just can't find them. No, you didn't answer yet, and neither did you, L.A. You tried. You have, oh, now she has a question, yeah. Fabian totally gets a prize. Okay, yes? Okay, so like, you know how like the 32 logs of Shabbat need 32 out of now? Can you explain why it's um, ask me when I bring up Shabbos. Okay. But please ask me. Because like I even forgot it in my car. Okay. In a few minutes. Okay. So, and fi so yes, yeah, so guys, let's just go over this. In your synagogue that you've been going to your whole life, it all began in the... Oh, your dad has half of your prize. He's just stashing it for oh, himself. that's okay. That's fine. Okay, in the synagogue, you have the... You go up to the... Bima. The Bima was the altar. Altar is called the Mizbeach. Bima is the... Altar. Great. The rabbi is the... Good. The ark is the... Good. And the cover is the... And the, and the near tamid is the... Menorah. Raise a round of applause. You've all been in the Mishkan before you know. Um, oh, so, 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 so... Wait, 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 wait. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. It's coming. Now, I said next that the second way... Say what? Oh, you want a prize. Oh, you just said that for the prize. <gasps> <laughs> That was funny enough that you get your own. <laughs> Don't worry, even though there's only one more unicorn glow wand, because these are unicorn glow wands, yes, my friend, thank courtesy of Anna. Oh my God, I didn't thank the team. You really, really, really want her to have it? Because of the Ahafta she has it because you asked for your friend and not for you. That was beautiful. I have a real embarrassing favor. I would really like a musician to step up and sing a song because I have a real that. I just, I, I never have had to do this in like years. Sam and Eliyahu, will you guys come up here together and just sing some Purim songs for a second because I've never done this, but I have to go to the restroom. Okay, all right, Purim songs. There's drums, just, I'm, I'll, I'll. Misha, 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 Misha,
echo me. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, 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 ta. One more time. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, ta, ti, ti, 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 ta. Ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta. Ti, ti, ta, ti, ti, ta. Does anyone want to come up and do one of those? <laughs> Let's do a few more. Ready? Ta ta ti ti ta. Ta ta ti ti ta. Ti 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 ta. Ti 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 ta. Ti 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 ta. Ti 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 ta. Cinco pata ta. Cinco pata ta. Cinco pata ta. Cinco pata ta. Cinco pati ti ta. Cinco pati ti ta. Cinco pati ti ta. Cinco pati ti ta. Okay, I think you guys are ready. <laughs> Here we go. So, oh, Don't. Here we, yeah, I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> oh no, I'm good. Um, I have a story. Who wants to hear a story? Wait, no, 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 it's a story. Finishing TV TV. Oh, oh, oh. Cinco 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 You like this? Israel at the movies, they used to stop it in the. Oh, we're back! Yeah, they used to stop the movie in the middle for a cigarette break. Oh, on that note, off camera, if anyone wants a special cigarette break, I'll just leave these right here. Okay, cool. Are you ready to learn about the. Yes. Mishkan. 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 I'm so sorry about the internet break. I don't know why Hashem does that sometimes. I get so frustrated because I wish you had good Torah. But okay, Hashem, we trust you. Okay. So guys, wasn't that amazing about your synagogue? Yeah. Would you like to learn the rest of how you've been involved in the Mishkan in your life? Sure. Yeah. Okay, I'm getting slightly low energy, so I'll need you to help me be high energy. Woo! 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 Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Bronze, how we doing? The hosts are good? Okay, rad. Okay, so quickly we're gonna go through why the truth is I just didn't understand the Tapa Patipita until I got it. Then I got it and it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. <laughs> I didn't get it. Okay, do you want... Okay, here's my infomercial. Are you feeling sad and lonely? Do you want to know how the Mishkan has been a part of your prayers too? Okay, <laughs> here we go. So your prayers. Um, if you've ever davened shachari, the entire reason that you had shachari in the first place is why? Why did the sages say, oh, well, hear ye Jewish men, I shall now punish you forever because you will daven morning, noon, and night. Why did the sages do this to the poor men and then obligate us women to at least daven once a day? What were they thinking? Why? Where was prayers even started? Yeah! Yeah! You're tall? There's more prizes. No, I need you. No, they're good. Wait till you see them. Okay, hold on a second. I need to refocus. Hold on. But, but I was just trying to role model and get people to look around so they'd just their friends. 
Clever in the back. You're, I'm <coughs> sure you're wonderful, but it's, uh, it's me, not you. Usually it's cool to talk 100 feet away from the speaker. <coughs> it's just me. I'm sorry. Sort of. Okay. So here we go. The whole reason we have prayers in the first place was a replacement for the animal sacrifices. Raise your hand if you did not know that. Our ancestors, they didn't have formal prayers. It wasn't like Yaakov, what, I mean, okay, that's a bad example, but it wasn't like the ancestors were, like the tribes were like, oh, it's time for shakari, let me go to shul. There was no shul, because there was a mishkan, and there were no prayers because there were animal sacrifices. The reason we pray shakari is because there were morning offerings of animals. Now, why there were sacrifices on one foot is because the other nations did it, and we essentially asked God to do it, so he kind of did it for us, but that's another topic. So then, why do we have mincha, an afternoon prayer service? Because there used to be... Mishkan. Where's my barbecue sauce? Did somebody take my barbecue sauce? Can we spray it on Abby again? No, we're not spraying it on Abby again. That's so funny. I told that to say... I got home and my dad's like, Neely, where's the ketchup? I was like, <laughs> don't trust her with ketchup. <laughs> I'm sorry, dad, I'm taking the barbecue sauce this week. <laughs> so the reason that we have mincha is because there were afternoon sacrifices, korbano. And the reason that we have aravit is actually because the sacrifices burn through the night. Now, why do we have musaf, that extra prayer? Why on Shabbat do we say amidah twice? Did I, just in case, did anyone wonder why on Shabbat we say Amidah twice? Why is there an additional, a Musaf offering? Musaf means additional. Because in the Mishkan, on Shabbat, and on holidays, and on Rosh Chodesh, there was an additional offering to show Hashem we're so happy that it's Rosh Chodesh. Chodesh Tov. We're so happy that it's Shabbat. We're so happy that it's any given holiday, we're going to bring more sacrifices, and that's why we bring today more prayers. Raise your hand if you just learned that about why we say Musaf. Bam, it's amazing. Okay, and by the way, we talked about the fact that there was between 30 to 40,000 Leviim singing in the Beit HaMikdash every single day. We talked about how there were between four to 5,000 instruments playing in the Beit HaMikdash every single day. Yeah, yes. Do we do sacrifices on Shabbat like we kill animals on Shabbat? Isn't that interesting? Yeah, he's gonna answer that for you later. Uh, it, what, did we do sacrifices on Shabbat in the temple? It's a whole nother story. We're gonna, we're gonna, which connects to your other question. Oh, okay. uh, sort of. Okay, we'll, we'll t I'll try to get there. I don't know, but let's do it after then. Okay, okay amazing. So we said that there was music in the temple, so where is the music? No, where is the music? I said it's in our prayers. Where is the music in our prayers? Sukhaita Zimra, the reason that we have, if you've ever looked in a shacharit service, and if you haven't looked in the shacharit service in a prayer book, so you can look later and understand what I'm saying. Every day when we pray, there's a whole section before we reach the Amidah called Sukhaita Zimra. It's verses of song. We're supposed to sing because we're supposed to imitate the... Mishkan. Mishkan. Wow, who knew? And by the way, there's even a section in shacharit that says, on this day, on Sunday, the Levi'im would sing. On this day, the Levi would sing. That comes from the Mishkan, from the temple as well. Okay, and by the way, um, that's also why we do Tachanun. If anyone has ever done Tachanun in our services, that's where you kind of confess your sins. That's from the sin and the guilt offerings. And if everyone has ever said, Mizmor le Toda, that's a replacement for the gratitude offerings. So our whole prayer service is actually modeled around that. And by the way, there's one more thing that you've had all your life. Who here has a father that blesses them on Friday night? Oh, that priestly blessing that's also recited in the Amidah, that priestly blessing comes from the? Mishkan. Mishkan. Because who gave the priestly blessing in the Mishkan? Aro. The Kohanim, exactly. Guys, blow your mind. You've known about the Mishkan your whole life. Now, we're going to go into Shabbos. By the way, is it like 10 o'clock? What time is it? It's midnight. 10.16. Is it? We've been going for two hours? I'm going to keep going. Anyone can leave when they want to go. It's, uh, to me, this is like, wow. Okay, I'll try to go fast. Shabbos, guys. Who here has been to Shabbos? Yeah. Oh my gosh, we're going to do like an epic shir on Rosh Chodesh Adar. That's perfect. Twice the Torah, all the fun. Oh my gosh. There is caffeine in the back. Okay, so Shabbos. Let's be really, really quick. Tell me what's on your Shabbos table. The first thing you have on your Shabbos table is? A tablecloth. Oh my God, there is a covering on your Shabbos table. Did you just think that's because Jewish women like tablecloths? No, because there were coverings on the? 
Mishkan. Then there, what else is there on your Shabbos table? Candles. Oh my God. What else is there on your Shabbos table? We also put salt on our Shabbos table because we used to salt the animal offerings. We also have, what else is on our Shabbos table? We said that, we just said that, the shulchan, right? We talked about the shulchan. Wine! Wine. Well, so meat is the animal sacrifice, nachon, and the wine, they, we used to pour wine libations on the Mizbeach too, but I didn't discuss it as well. And what else, what do we say your father does to you at Friday night at your Shabbos meal? Blessing. Basically blessing. And what's the most common thing we do at a Shabbat table? Sing. Exactly. Your Shabbos table is literally a replica of the Mishkan. Yeah. And the gematrias, if we had time, you will blow your mind. Yain, dag, chala, everything, if you do gematria katan, adds up to seven, which is Shabbos, which is the idea. Oh, by the way, here's your question. Ready? We're not going to get to it, but he gives a fantastic sheer on this topic. How do we define Shabbat? We just tell it. How, how do we define Shabbat? What are we not allowed to do on Shabbat? Work. In Hebrew, those are called the 39, which are the things that we actually did in the Mishkan. So everything that you don't do on Shabbat is because we did it in the Mishkan. Every single Shabbos, you're reenacting the Mishkan in a different way. Okay, now, this is, it gets better and better. Because we just read this list off again. We said yeah, that it has synagogues. to do with your synagogues. It has to do with your prayers. prayers. It has to do with your... Hi. How are you doing, Doreen? Good. It has to do with your Shabbos table. Let's just real quick re energize. Here we go. It has to do with your synagogue. Synagogue. It has to do with your prayers. Has to do with your Shabbat. oh, by the way, Shabbos table. The table in and of itself is shulchan, right? And then it has to do with your body. Are you ready for this? I'm just gonna go quick. Ready? Here we go. The Aaron was compared to your beating heart. It's at the center of your body and it holds the Torah there. The Kruvim, where we said the wind, the spirit of the divine Shechina is your? Lungs. Your lungs. The Shulchan is your? Your stomach, your digestive tract. The menorah, which has seven lights. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The menor your face. You see, your face shines. I don't look at Sam Blazer and be like, Sam Blazer, your elbow is shining. You must be a big gentleman. No. If somebody is shining, you look at them and you say, wow, the more you're shining. I don't mean her left shin. I mean her face is shining. That's We talk about the face is the menorah. Okay. And then, well, uh, quick, quick, quick. The ketoret, the incense is your? Your sense of smell, right? And the kior, which is the, the hand washing, which I'm sorry, I don't have a display. I forgot it. Here, we can use your cup. <laughs> the hand washing station has liquids and that in your body, how much of your body is liquid? Yeah, some people confuse this, it's around 70%, so all the waters in your body. The curtains are your? And the beams, which we didn't discuss yet, are your ribs, your skeletal structure. You actually live in a mishkan, and when we sing, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, you actually already are, we just have to have the spiritual kavana. Yeah, yeah. Now, the universe. We said that the universe is also a model of the Mishkan. Um, it's talked about in Talmud Brachot 55a, and it teaches, listen like this, Betzalel, who constructed the Mishkan, who was 13 freaking years old, okay? The one who I said the Mishkan is the absolute perfect sacred geometry, according to like Einstein and like massive minds. It says that he was able to, con we're comparing now the universe and the Mishkan. He was able to construct the, the tabernacle because, listen, if you don't get this, it's, it's advanced, okay? So don't give yourself a hard time. Bitzalel. Pardon? Bitzalel, the builder, Bitzalel and this guy named Ohuliav. That's the English pronunciation, yeah. That was his, what? Bitzalel is the main architect of the Mishkan. He was 13 years old and Hashem gave him divine information. Wow. Yeah, don't ever doubt children, says my teacher Leah. But Salo built the most extraordinary structure known to mankind. And his helper, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't ever doubt the children. They, they're, 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 we'll talk about it, yeah. Did you raise your hand? Oh, very good. Pati <laughs> tipita. He says he was able to construct the tabernacle because, okay, listen, he was, he understood the secrets of the Hebrew letters. And these are the same Hebrew letters with which God created heaven and earth. We know that God created the universe through the Hebrew letters. Because B'Tzalel understood the deep esoteric meaning of every Hebrew letter, he was able to reconstruct the Mishkan because he understood how the universe was created. The sages considered the Mishkan to actually be a microcosm of the entire universe. 
So when, when NASA starts projecting images that look like the temple, you'll know they've finally figured out how the universe looks. The upper and lower curtains are heaven and earth. The water in the kior is the water on the planet. The, a the sacrifice represents the animal life on this earth. The incense represents spices, which are plants, the plant life. The menorah represents the luminaries, the sun, the moon, and sky. Amen. And there's more, but not very much more, guys. We're almost at the end. I think 10 more minutes, and we're golden, OK? 20? No. Oh, you know, you know what happens after the Ashiri. Uh. It's dumb. So it's not, oh, we're actually really close to the end, the truth is. So Rev Trugman says that every facet of the blueprints, make sure we sing that at the end, please, for the building of the tabernacle, they had tremendous meaning, and we're not getting into it. Like I said, we could take hours. The beams, the measurements, the placement of where everything was, the colors chosen, everything, 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 everything is literally specifically chosen for a deep kavana. So we said synagogues, prayers, Shabbos tables, your own body and the universe, but why? We forgot the most important part. What was the whole freaking purpose of this Mishkan? What do we do there? Why did we go to the Mishkan? Tshuva to get close to God. The whole point was tshuva, but not for the sake of tshuva. The whole point was to, to be closer to your true self and to, to correct your ways and be willing to say I was wrong because I want to come close to the people I love because I want to come close to God. Because if I have a boyfriend and... I'm gonna fight with him and I don't own up and say I'm sorry, we're not gonna or we're not gonna get closer. And if I don't get closer to him, I'm not gonna get closer to Hashem. And if and all of us and our parents and our friends and all of our relationships until we atone, until we say we're sorry and we really own things and, and I bless myself. It's not like I do this, I'm just blessing myself to do this, you know? Yeah. It's like as soon as like we can really own what we've contributed and then the person that sees us, even if they're hurt by us, then we can come close. And that's all Hashem wants is to be close to us. So all of this, everything your body, the universe, your synagogues, your prayers, half of the freaking Torah, all these instructions, all of the psychedelics, all of the unicorns, literally, yeah. are, oh, and I mean that by psychedelics because we were burning acacia wood or acacia wood, which is the highest DMT out of any wood that you could find. Yeah, the Kohen Gadol was flying. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> more than my audience members that are looking at me like this right now. <laughs> Sorry, I called it audience. It's not audience. It's the chaver learning. It's just the words. Okay, so the point is that Hashem, through all of this, the whole reason you came out tonight, the whole reason that I believe, the whole reason that we're, in, we're doing this on Adar is because it's such a joke, right? We have all these halachas. It's so strict. We have to study Torah, pray every day, every night. But really all of it, just because Hashem wants to, to, live, to live in us and with us and to, to, to alev dar, to to live in our hearts, in, the, in all those places, so that we could be close. That's everything, and that's why we could sing and dance, because Hashem's just like, I just want to be close to you. I just want to be close, which is really cool, because in the beginning of the Parsha, the opening line is, please, those who have generous hearts, come do this work. That's what he calls upon. It's a, v'kholi truma, me'et kol ish asher yidvenu libo. From everybody whose heart inspires him, do this work. And that's why all of us are here tonight, you know? Um, and you know it's beautiful, just another advanced comment. It says Vaikhuli Truma, but I learned from Rav Trugman that Hasidic Rabbis actually says not Vaikhuli Truma, but Vaikhuli Hashem is saying, take me. Whoa. Yeah, take me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, oh. <laughs> Skip a card, do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I would do it to every card, though. Yeah. Okay. No, but we're so close. We're so close. Um, last week, we spoke in Parshat Mishpatim about fixings, tikkunim. We said how every single halacha is there to help us fix a past life, essentially. Reincarnation, that's what we spoke about. It's on my Facebook page if you want to watch it. We talked about the 53 laws. And what we didn't speak about, I forgot the punchline, is that 53 is the gematria gun. Because through these laws, we go back to Garden of Eden, to Gan Eden, to do the fixings all the way back, those intergenerational fixings, all the way back to the gun, the 53. Right? So we talked about how we're doing all of this work to go all the way back to Gan Eden and fix it. But but here's the thing. How did we get kicked out of Gan Eden? Does anyone know the mechanism that Hashem used? How did he keep us out? Keruvim. <laughs> what, are, what are Keruvim? Angels. So Hashem kicked us out of Gan Eden and he kept us out through the angels. And now in the Mishkan, what did, what did the Kohen had to approach in the Holy of Holies? Yeah, we got kicked out through the angels and now we come back 
through the angels. Yeah, and it's the same thing with the Shechina question that you were asking before, Nechama, about the exile of the Shechina also happened after Gan Eden. Okay, yeah, Baruch Hashem. And, okay, so it says here, I, I, I think I copied this from somewhere, but I didn't write it. The entire creation, including the creation of man, the entire animal and plant kingdoms, Shabbat, and the universe is described in Breshit in a little more than 40 verses. But the details of building the Mishkan take up more than 400 verses. Wow. Yeah, because it's not actually relevant what Hashem gives us. Hashem gave us the universe. He created the world. Breshit bar Lokim, He gave us all this. What's actually relevant is what we take with that and give back to Him. And that's why there's 40 on Breshit, but 400 on the Mishkan. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Machon. So, and I asked last year on Facebook, what does it mean to be a Mishkan? What does it mean to be a Mikdash? And my friend Telly gave me my favorite answer, she should be blessed. And she said, oh, well, what's it? Thank you. She said, what's a Mishkan? She's like, that's a place where people go to seek God. And the goal and the blessing here is how to practically apply that is, well, if you're the Mishkan, and the Mishkan was a place that people came to seek God, then how do you have to behave and act? Wow. Yeah. If Delaram is the Mishkan, then I have to go to Delaram. When I, I, wanna, I wanna find God when I find Delaram. And that's, that's how, to, you, how to practically apply that, I'll ask you to talk about with your neighbor afterwards. But uh, wow, I really would love to ask you first the question is, what does it mean for you to be a Mishkan? But I wanted to offer tellies too, but I, I, I do offer that is, what does it mean for you to be a Mishkan? What would that mean practically? Because if you keep it in the ethereal, we need to study, teach, and do. You can't miss the do part. So don't, please don't just take what I'm saying. Go share it with your friends, share it at your Shabbos table, and then choose how do you become a Mishkan. And then I bring it back circle to the beginning, to the bucket of poo story, and ask you, what is your bucket of poo, and how do you make a Mishkan with that? So, um, so here's my question. Uh, tonight, we, uh, I was, I was going to do a full, full, uh, a full recap, but I'm going to do a partial recap. Tonight we learned about the fact that we're in Rosh Chodesh Adar, it's Pisces, it's the fixing of worry, it's the fixing of laughter, it's uh, the fixing of the spleen. I don't know where that is, somewhere around here, <laughs> something, okay. We talked about Adar is Aleph Dar, Hashem wants to dwell in us and how convenient then that our Parsha is. Wow. Whoa, guys. Our Parsha is Truma. Truma. There's more prizes, okay? I will get them after we turn Facebook <laughs> off, and they're good. Um, so it's Parsha Truma, and in Truma we build the Mishkan, Mishkan which came after. Which was to take the Harsina experience with us forever. And even though the Mishkan became the temple, and then the temple got destroyed, then read this sign that Mishkan went into all of our lives by Prayers. synagogues. Prayers. Prayers, Shabbos table, body and universe. universe. That really we've been living in the Mishkan, the Makom Shechina the whole time. We also learned the fun fact about the unicorns, that they're real from Gemara Shabbos 28A. You're going to need that because people are going to be like, that is so not true. What kind of hippie tour class did you go to? <laughs> You'd be like, I don't remember anything. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> but you do remember Gemara Shabbos 28A. Uh, we learned all about a lot of the deeper meanings, which I wish we could review, but I invite you to watch again. And uh, may Hashem give us a bracha. Amen. Amen. I didn't even give the bracha, but I'm in. <laughs> That's a good Rosh Chodesh Adar moment. May Hashem give us a bracha to, to be the song. Let's sing it. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Can I put the video on you? Pure and holy. Tried and true, and with thanksgiving, you're prettier than me. I'll be a living sanctuary for you. So may Hashem bless us to be a fulfillment of that song. May Hashem bless us to tune into the Sim Chav Adar. And I'm going to turn this off, but my favor, because really this is the most meaningful part, it's not about me teaching, it's what you take. So I ask you to please turn to one person next to you, and if they're busy, have patience and wait. I know it's all humiliating. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. I learned, oh. Yeah, <laughs> right. So please share, and Facebook online, if you don't mind to please share in the comment, like what's your takeaway, because your takeaway is the most important part. So Rav thank you. Thank you, our hosts. Thank you, every, oh my God, thank you to the team, and to Tamar, and to Rivka, and to Yako, and to Anna, and to Gideon, and who else was helping tonight? Yeah. 
you. Anyways, thank you so much for everybody. Thank you for watching. Please do not go without sharing with somebody next to you what your takeaway is. Chodesh Tov! Thank you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Chodesh Tov!